Yes. So far, we have discussed uncontrolled bridge, wherein all the four devices were diodes. We replace two diodes by two thyristors, and the resulting bridge we call it as off control or semi control. What are the characteristics of this semi control bridge? For alpha from 0 to pi, output, output voltage is always positive, is given by Vm by pi into 1 plus cos alpha current is always unidirectional. So, the operation is always in quadrant 1 or one single quadrant converter. Now, we will replace the remaining two diodes by thyristors. The resulting bridge is known as a fully controlled bridge. Here is, here is a configuration T1 to T4 they are thyristors. In the positive of T1 and T2 are triggered and in the negative of T3 and T4 are triggered. The assumption that we made for uncontrolled or semi-controlled bridge are still valid. Same assumptions will make the input voltage is sinusoidal and load current is constant and ripple free, load current is constant and ripple free. So, input voltage V A B, V A B is positive in the positive half and V B A is positive in the negative half. So, at alpha T 1 and T 2 are triggered and at pi plus alpha T 3 and T 4 are triggered. Till you trigger T1 and T2, T3 and T4 continue to conduct in the positive half. Remember, load current is continuous, therefore, at any given time, two devices should be on. So, in the previous negative half, we had triggered T3 and T4 at pi plus alpha. So, till you trigger T1 and T2, they continue to conduct even in the positive half. Okay. So, since T3 and T4 are conducting, potential B is potential of B is same as the positive DC bus and potential of A is same as the negative poten uh, the negative DC bus, and we know that in the positive of potential of B is B is less than that of potential A. So, we get minus or negative of the input voltage or we get output voltage is V B A V B A this is V B A. So, this is the output voltage negative till you trigger the incoming T 1 and T 2 thyristors. Remember in the positive of Though potential of A is higher than potential of B, we have a common uh, cathode configuration, it is fine, but then T1 is in blocking mode. In the sense, we have not applied the trigger pulse to T1. So, T3 continues to conduct, same is true in the in the lower half. Just prior to alpha, what was the output voltage? Output voltage was V. B A. Now, at alpha we have triggered T 3 in the upper half and we have triggered sorry in the upper half we have triggered T 1 and in the lower half we have triggered T 2. The moment you trigger T 1 potential of A is the same as the positive DC bus that is the cathode potential of T 3 and a positive voltage appears sorry a negative voltage appears across T 3 it turns off it turns off hence the name line commutation. So, at alpha plus T 1 and T 2 starts conducting now the potential load uh, potential is V 
a b now let me repeat just prior to alpha output voltage was v b a because t3 t4 were conducting immediately after alpha the output voltage is v a b okay so at that instant input voltage is v a b this value so instantaneously this voltage jumps to v a b so once the device are turned on output voltage is same as the input voltage it is vm sin omega t till pi plus alpha so whatever that happened at alpha will happen will happen at pi plus alpha and the process continues so from alpha to pi t1 and t2 and at pi plus alpha to 2 pi plus alpha it is it is t3 t4 what is the conduction period of each device or conduction angle or each device conducts for pi radians pi radians this is the thyristor current waveform is this i assume the current is constant and ripple free so thyristor t1 start or t2 starts from alpha to pi plus alpha when the thyristors are on source current is same as the load current okay so it is just a square wave is continuous unlike in half control bridge in half control bridge from alpha to pi sorry alpha alpha to pi it is the load current from pi to pi plus alpha is a free wheeling period source does not supply power and again from pi plus alpha to 2 pi is the same load current flows from the source okay so see the difference in in the load the source current is a continuous waveform how does the fundamental component of is look like it's a sinusoid starts it it cuts this x axis at alpha itself something like this okay what is the value of the output voltage average value of the output voltage i need to integrate this waveform okay so these are the equivalent circuits in the positive half t1 and t2 are triggered in the negative half this is the equivalent circuit this is the equivalent circuit okay since there are two pulses per cycle this converter is also known as two pulse converter okay same in the sense average value of the output voltage is given by this expression alpha to pi plus alpha vm sin omega t d omega t it is given by 2 vm by pi into cos alpha it is 2 vm by pi into cos alpha so v not or the average value of the output voltage is positive for alpha varying from 0 to pi by 2 and becomes negative for alpha varying from pi by 2 to pi so let me repeat at pi average value of the output voltage is 0 at sorry at pi by 2 average value of the output voltage is 0 from 0 to pi by 2 average value is positive and from pi by 2 to pi it is negative so we have two quadrant operation from 0 to pi by 2 is positive 
average voltage is positive, current is always unidirectional and from pi by 2 to pi it is negative. We have two quadrant operation, two quadrant operation, hence the name two quadrant converter, two quadrant converter. Okay. I said in the positive, in the first quadrant, V is positive, I is also positive. So, average power input to the bridge is positive. Whereas, in the fourth quadrant or when alpha greater than pi by 2 and if the current is continuous, average value of the output voltage is negative, current is always positive. So, average power input to the bridge is negative. So, if I called the first quadrant operation as conversion in the sense it converts AC power to, to DC power or the source supplies power to the load, I will call the operation from pi by 2 to pi as inversion, load supplies power back to the source. So, I will repeat, I had called the operation from 0 to pi by 2 as conversion because source supplies power to the load. Now, from pi by 2 to pi, input power to the bridge is negative. In other words, load is supplying power back to the source. I will call this pro process as inversion. Okay. Remember, average value of the output voltage is negative or this expression is valid only if the current is continuous. Current is continuous. Please, just because it is a fully controlled bridge, do not straight away you do not use this expression to determine the output voltage. First, you find out whether the load current is continuous or not. If it is discontinuous, you cannot use this expression directly. Okay. Remember. Now, see the waveform. Let me draw the waveforms for, for alpha greater than 90. So, here are the waveforms till you trigger T1 and T2, T3, T4 are conducting, VO output voltage is V, B, A, which is negative in the positive half. So, I have a negative voltage at this point. At alpha, we have triggered T1 and T2. Now, output voltage jumps to V A B. Now, V A B. So, this is it. And it continues. So, if you find, you will find that average value of this waveform is negative. Area under the curve from 0 to alpha is much higher compared to that from alpha to pi. Small area here, large area here, therefore average value is negative. The source current waveform is the same, it just shifts. It is negative from 0 to alpha, alpha to pi plus alpha is positive and so on, so on. So, here are the all the equivalent circuits, same equivalent circuits whatever that we did for operation pro, for alpha 0 to pi by 2 are still valid here. Now, coming to power factor, how does, what is the expression for? power factor for a 
फुली कंट्रोल ब्रिज सोर्स करंट इज अ स्क्वायर वेव द वैल्यू ऑफ द मैग्नेट्यूड ऑफ द सोर्स करंट इज आई नॉट फ्रॉम अल्फा टू पाई अल्फा टू पाई प्लस अल्फा एंड इट इज माइनस आई नॉट फ्रॉम पाई प्लस अल्फा टू टू पाई प्लस अल्फा सो इफ आई राइट द फोर इयर्स सीरीज एवरेज कंपोनेंट इज जीरो बिकॉज इट इज अर ऑर्ड फंक्शन ऑल cosine terms are zero you have only a sinusoidal terms or only sine terms sin omega t sin 3 omega t sin 5 omega t and so on what is the magnitude of sin omega t term this found that the peak value of the sin omega t term is 4 by pi into i not where i not is the magnitude of the square wave the rms value is 2 root 2 by pi into i not okay so remember of course you don't need to remember you can always prove or you can find that the peak value of the fundamental component this has to be a sinusoid This has to be a sinusoid. The peak value of the fundamental component, that is I S one, is given by four by pi into I naught. This is I naught. So the R M S value is again root two times. So two root two by pi into I naught. What is the R M S value of this waveform, source current waveform? What is R M S value? R M S value is same as I naught. rms value is same as i not so what is the expression for power factor power factor is v1 i1 into cos alpha 1 divided by v rms into i rms it is the mean input power divided by the input Volt amperes. I told you that only the fundamental component of voltage and current are responsible for power transfer, and we have assumed that input voltage is a sinusoid. So RMS value of the fundamental component of the input voltage is same as V RMS itself. I R M S is I not fundamental component of the load current. The R M S value is two root two by pi into I not. Displacement factor is cos alpha. Displacement factor is cos alpha. Is the angle between. the fundamental component of input voltage and the fundamental component of the source current is alpha itself in fact it is minus alpha so cos alpha indicate cos minus alpha is cos alpha itself so the power factor is given by 2 root 2 by pi into cos alpha mind you it is lagging is lagging okay power factor here is 2 root 2 by pi into cos alpha remember in the second quadrant i told that source is receiving power in other words load is supplying power back to the source how is that possible or what sort of a load can supply power back to the source okay 
what happens if I connect a load, connect a purely resistive load to the, the load terminals of the fully controlled bridge or in other words, in other words the fully controlled bridge is feeding a purely resistive load. Can the current be continuous? If the purely, if the fully controlled bridge is supplying power to a purely resistive load, current becomes 0 when the instantaneous value of the applied voltage is 0 and in the negative half current cannot flow. Are you with me? If the current can flow through a resistor only when the instantaneous value across it is, is positive. This is the, if, the, if the instantaneous value is 0 or negative, you cannot have that condition at all, you cannot have that situation at all in the case of a resistor. Okay? In the DC. So, current is going to be discontinuous from 0 to alpha, source supplies current from alpha to pi, at pi instantaneous value of the applied voltage to the load is 0 and tries to become negative. So, current has also has become 0 at omega t is equal to pi, SCS T1 and T2 they are turned off of their own because current has become 0, we did not turn them off, we did not remember we did not turn them off, they become they turned off of their own because current flowing through them has become 0. Okay. So, there is a difference, if the current is continuous I have to, I have to trigger the other two to turn the previously conducting thyristors, since the load is resistive and alpha is finite and greater than 0. So, beyond pi to pi plus alpha there is no current. So, the average value of the output voltage is definitely is not equal to 2 V m by pi into cos alpha. Okay, remember. So, average value of the output voltage across the resistor is always positive, current is unidirectional. So, S the resistive load absorbs power or that power is dissipated as heat. Okay. What, what happens if the load is purely inductive? At steady state, average value of the voltage across it should be 0. In other words, average LDI by DT should be 0. If average value of LDI by DT is positive, it implies that d by dt is positive or in other words i goes on increasing. So, in other words there is no steady state. Remember I did this, uh, this topic while doing the uncontrolled bridge. In the, in the case of half in the case of half wave rectification, inductor current continuously flows for 2 pi radians, okay. it becomes 0 at 2 pi, it attained a peak at omega t is equal to pi, whereas if I, whereas in the case of uh, uncontrolled bridge current goes on building up because at omega t is equal to pi plus again we are applying a positive voltage. So, in other words LDI by DT is positive, so current goes on increasing till the device fails 
or the inductor fails or the source fuse blows off okay so the current goes on increasing till inductor saturates or the device fail or the input side the the fuse blows off okay so there is if ldi by dt average value of the ldi by dt is positive there is no steady state but can it be negative it can never be negative average value of the voltage across it can never be negative so in other words if the load is passive average value of the output voltage into the average value of the load current is either zero or it is positive it is zero for a ideal inductive load and if it is positive for rl load so when can i have inversion or in other words when can i have average value of the output voltage being negative it is possible only when the load current is continuous okay so either a load should be rle type or so either we should have a battery there at the load side or have a, a dc motor because a battery can either absorb the power or supply the power similarly a have a machine if the input power to the machine is positive it converts the electrical energy to mechanical energy known as the motoring operation whereas if the input energy input power is negative it implies that the machine is actually like a generator it converts the mechanical power to electrical power so if the input power is positive it is known as the motoring action if the input power is negative in other words machine is supplying power or source is absorbing power it is known as the generating action okay so if i have a rle type of load either a battery or a or a dc machine it is possible to have a continuous conduction in the fourth quadrant or or for alpha is equal to greater than pi by 2 it is possible to have continuous conduction in other words average value of the output voltage can be negative therefore powers input power to the bridge can be negative in other words in the source can absorb power only when i have a dc motor or a rle type of load okay now let's see how this regeneration takes place how or how the machine can supply power back to the source when it is being fed from a converter take this example i have a, a variable dc source vn which is given by 2 vm by pi into cos alpha provided the current is continuous ra is the armature resistance la is the armature circuit inductance generally tau vi is very small and e is the back emf so if i consider this as a source supplying power to the machine current enters the terminal a so these are the two popularly used terminals a and aa okay if the current enters a it is known as the motoring action and if the current leaves a it is known as a generating action our machine teacher has told us during the machines lab now if eb is higher than vn current can reverse current leaves the terminal a by the way why are we doing all this initially we are operating the machine as a motor now you want to operate as a generator what are the advantages 
why do you need a two quadrant converter? Let's see. Consider a DC machine. Develop torque is K into phi into I n. And d omega by dt is given by T minus T L divided by J. I am neglecting the frictional torque. Now assume that motor has attained a steady state running stably at some omega. Now I want to bring the speed down to zero. In other words, I would like to stop the machine. One option is put out the supply. So I is also zero, phi is also zero, torque will be zero. So machine will decelerate. Whatever the stored energy, the stored kinetic energy in its inertia is dissipated as heat to overcome the friction. So machine depending upon the mechanical time constant and plus depending upon if the machine has a large inertia, machine speed will reduce very slowly. The stored energy in the inertia is dissipated as heat. What is the second way to bring the speed down to 0? Instead of making T e is equal to 0 or in other words instead of switching off the supply, can I make T e negative? Yeah, I can make T e negative. In other words, it is possible to make T negative by making either I a negative or making phi negative. Now, as of now, we will concentrate on reversing armature current. Okay. So, in principle, it is possible to make T e negative. What is the advantage? Now, d omega by dt is minus of T e plus T l by j. So, rate of deceleration is faster. Second is I have made T negative, T is positive for motoring action, now T is negative for generating action. Whatever the stored energy in the inertia or the kinetic energy is converted into electrical energy. So, we are achieving two things, faster deceleration and saving electrical energy. Stored energy is converted back to electrical energy. I will just give an example. In a sugar mill, generally the rating of the motor is of the order of 90 to 100 kilowatt or so and it has to stir the molasses. Okay. Basically, it has a large inertia load. So, when you put on the supply, machine takes a long, really a large time to accelerate because it has to overcome the J is very large. So, it draws a rated current, takes a longer time, much longer time to accelerate and attain a steady state. Once it attains a steady state, d omega by dt is 0. Now, it is just to overcome the friction and uh, some sort of a mixer, viscous torque. So, as steady state, it is drawing a very a fraction of its rated current, I am telling you. While accelerating, it took the rated current, slowly accelerates, attains a steady state. Now, it strikes a, a very small current because load torque is completely or most of the load torque is the inertia torque, J d omega dt types. Now, if you want to put out the supply, I was told that it takes of the order of 90 minutes, one and a half hours. It stops, come down to zero after 90 minutes or so and all the energy, the so called energy stored in the inertia is dissipated as heat. So, if the drive was stripped, it takes one and a half hours to come down to, to zero speed then you have to give some time for the motor to cool down. Again, if you want to put on the motor, it will take its own time to accelerate. See that the wastage in, in the time because no work is being done and all the energy is dissipated as heat. 
So using a two quadrant converter, so you can achieve faster deceleration, saving in electrical energy. At what cost? I need to have a, a two quadrant converter. So since I am bringing the motor to halt or I am decelerating at a much faster rate and I am converting the stored kinetic energy into electrical energy, this sort of a braking is known as regenerative braking. Maybe in your undergraduate level your teacher might have talked about plugging dynamic braking because this is regenerative braking. What is regenerative braking? Stored energy, a stored, stored kinetic energy is dissipated as sorry as converted back to electrical energy. So, these are the advantages. Now, coming back to the two quadrant converter fed DC motor operating as a generator, I said I should reverse, I have flipped the armature terminals. Now, it is connected to AA, A. Current for the machine, current has reversed, now it is leaving AA, but then for the converter, current is still the same, direction of the current cannot reverse for the converter, whereas voltage has reversed. Now, if I neglect LA, the equivalent circuit is V and here is the EB and RA, so this is the equivalent circuit. Machine, the mot machine was prior to regenerative braking, it was running as a motor, input is electrical, output is mechanical. Now, it is act like a generator, mind you there is no mechanical input, kinetic energy is converted to electrical energy, so speed will fall. As the speed falls, back EMF also falls, EB falls. Okay. So, as speed falls, EB fall, EB will reduce. Now, in order to maintain the current, armature current, I need to change or I need to reduce this voltage. So, therefore, alpha should be decreased towards 90 degrees. Remember, Initially, EB was high, so V in is also high magnitude. Huh? So, alpha was nearly maybe around 165 or 170, theoretically maybe 180, but you cannot achieve that anyway. Now, speed is falling or speed as speed reduces, EB is EB reduces, I have to maintain the current. So, V A has to be reduced. How do I do? Reduce alpha towards 90 degrees. Okay. So, you need to have a, some sort of a, a closed loop. More about it, you will study in electric drives. It does not fall in the scope of power electronics course. Okay. I just now I told you that either flux I can reverse or armature current I can reverse. Now, which is better? Whatever do you do in life, you have to pay a price. The armature time constant is very small compared to field time constant. Okay. So, if you want to have a, a fast response, I will go in for a flipping of armature current or interchange the armature terminals, armature current reversal rather than the flux reversal because time constant is very large, flux has to die down and then it has to attain a negative value, it takes a much longer time. Okay. But then when I am saying that I am flipping the armature terminals, we know that armature current is much, much higher compared to a field current, compared to field current. So, if I use a, just a two quadrant converter and a contactor which interchange the armature terminals, it has to handle a large current. Momentarily, I am breaking an inductive circuit, 
of after all there is an inductance or invariably we connect a inductor in in the dc link also to to reduce the current pulsation so i am breaking an inductive circuit a large current so sparking may occur sparking may occur so that's what i said faster response contactor has to carry a large current slow response then it going for a fail current so far we discussed about the continuous conduction now let's discuss about the discontinuous conduction load is rle okay it's a bit difficult here there are various cases i'll consider case 1 okay case 1 the current is finite when t1 and t2 are triggered in other words somewhere here at this point you are triggered the t1 and t2 current is finite okay so t1 and t2 starts conducting prior to to this instant t3 t4 were conducting current is finite scr t1 and t2 are forward bias that's why you can trigger at alpha which is less than alpha min where alpha min is e divided by vm scr has started conducting in the positive half since e is higher than v in the instantaneous value of the input voltage di by dt is negative i have discussed this before di by dt is negative so what happens is current becomes zero much before alpha min when alpha is equal to alpha min. before much before this instant current becomes zero so prior to triggering t1 t3 t4 were conduct t4 were conducting in output voltage is vba which is negative you triggered at alpha t1 t2 starts conducting now load voltage is vab which is positive somewhere at this instant current became zero now the output voltage is e so it jumps to e okay now where will the conduction start again if there is only one pulse one triggering pulse scr will not conduct again if there are large number of pulses i told you the gate circuit requirement in the beginning if there are large number of pulses and in case if there is a pulse present at alpha is equal to alpha min when when that instant e becomes or instantaneous value of the input voltage becomes e scr starts conducting again i'm assuming that there are large number of pulses in the gate okay so again scr starts conduct and cycle repeats okay so current was finite diodes scr started conducting output voltage is same as the vn current became zero because di by dt is negative till vi is equal to e so at vi is equal to e gate signal was present scr gets triggered there again and starts conducting so in principle you need to have a two three sharp pulses like this a number of sharp pulses are required okay this is case 1 so if the gate pulses is present it starts conducting at this instant when e is equal to v what the second case scrs t1 and t2 are triggered beyond alpha is equal to alpha min current became zero somewhere at this instant so till the current become zero t3 t4 were conducting output voltage is vba which is negative current became zero the load voltage is now 
ye it jumps to ye it continues till you trigger t1 and t2 at alpha so, so this alpha is higher than alpha min the moment you trigger the thyristor it starts conducting okay now here there is a jump why there is a jump here because the instantaneous value of the input voltage at alpha is much higher than much higher than e your trigger at this point so just prior to triggering t1 and t2 output voltage was e now you triggered t1 and t2 now output voltage is b b b a b v a b so it jumps and continues so this is the second case there could be few more cases let us not discuss those now we will do some other things okay. now let's see a, a, a fully controlled bridge feeding a inductive load alpha is greater than 90 can il be continuous i said if il is continuous 2 vm by pi into cos alpha alpha is greater than 90 which is becomes negative so average output voltage becomes negative is just not possible so if you draw this waveform it is wrong this is wrong because this is for the continuous conduction so therefore remember average voltage across the inductor could be positive or zero if it is positive it is no steady state at steady state it is zero so assume that if alpha is 110 degrees t1 and t4 will turn off of their own i'm telling you t1 and t2 were triggered at alpha is 110 they will turn off of their own at 250 degrees because average voltage this area should be equal to this area so that is 11 by pi by 18 this should be 25 by pi by 18 so it will turn off because current has become zero mind you if alpha is 110 t3 and t4 will be triggered only at 180 plus 110 that is 290 because scs were turned off their own much before that so this is the waveform so definitely now yes if you integrate it if you find the average value of this is zero okay this waveform if you find is zero case 2 so alpha cannot be continuous even if the load is purely inductive for alpha greater than 90 for alpha less than 90 i will be continuous i said that's why i have written i will be continuous till till even the scr or or the inductor fails or scr will fail or the source input fuse will fail okay depends at alpha is equal to 90 degrees current is just continuous because 2 vm by pi into cos alpha alpha is 90 it is zero is so it was just zero starts increasing instantaneous value of the input voltage is zero at omega t is equal to pi at that instant i is equal to i m or the peak value a negative voltage is applied to the load so d by dt is negative current starts decreasing so it is just becomes zero when you trigger if you trigger alpha is equal to 90 degrees okay so remember even if the load is inductive it is current is just continuous at alpha is equal to 90 degrees if it is less than 90 it will be continuous it goes on building up till something happens for alpha greater than 90 current cannot be continuous if the load is purely inductive okay remember this 